What's up? This is Ray. Welcome back. Hey, finally, we got another analog episode. I love doing analog film type thing reviews, and we got a special review today. We're going to be checking out how to develop color film, but at room temperature. If you don't know anything about developing color film, it may not seem like a big deal, but historically, we've been taught that color film has to be developed at 102 degrees, and you can't deviate too much out of that or else the colors will shift and things will go wrong and it'll look bad. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not true. Um, Cinestill, I realize they have a kit that sh allows you to develop it at room temperature by giving you a temperature chart and a time adjustment. And that's something I've always wanted to experiment with for years and I never got the time to do it. Uh, and they beat me to it. <laughs> so yeah, if you're curious with, about developing color film, Believe me, it's much easier than you think. It's like baking a cake almost, except you don't want to eat the ingredients, you know? Um, so in this review, I'm going to show you how to use it and pretty much a lot of image results that I've took. Uh, so you can see how beautiful the colors are and, and pretty much how easy it is. So yeah, if you're curious about developing color film, you've been scared, you've been reluctant, I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way. So uh, let's get right into it. All right. So before we talk about the technicals of the kit, I want to show you something uh, really cool. One of my first images I took using this developer. This is me uh, doing a, a studio portrait using a softbox. And I have to say, looking at the colors, I was shocked the first time I developed it because uh, I've been developing color film for three years and I constantly have problems getting accurate colors. I usually have to fight uh, to color correct. This is how it came straight out the scanner. Look, especially look at my skin tone. I'm, I, I really like it. And I have to point out, this is like the cheapest color film you can get. This is like Fuji C200. It's the kind you used to be able to get at Walmart, a three pack for $10. And um, it, just realizing, look at how close it's coming to accurate color. And we developed it at room temperature. You know, um, it's just really impressed with it. So yeah. I, at one point, I really didn't like color anymore. I didn't want to bother with color film anymore, but this is kind of bringing it back, uh, making <laughs> making me want to shoot some more. So yeah, I just had to point these out. Okay, so look, I have to tell you, up until this point, I've been using the Arista developing kit. Um, it's kind of what everyone uses. But um, so this Cinestill kit, it kind of has the same chemicals. So this is what comes in the box. The developer is made of three different chemicals. Uh, you mix it with this amount of water and this temperature of water. You put in the part A, mix it, then you put in the part B and mix it, and you put in the part C and mix it, and let it sit. Then there's something called a blix. It's a bleach and a fixer mixed together. Um, there's the same thing. You put in this amount of water at this temperature, and you pour in the part A, mix it, part B and part C, and mix them in that order, and uh, you let them sit. And then you decide, normally you'd have to heat that water up to 102 degrees, but this kit has a chart that allows you to choose what temperature you're gonna use from 72 Fahrenheit up to 102. So you should be able to find your room temperature somewhere in there, and that's what's so cool about it. Um, I decided to use, I think it's 79 degrees, uh, because that's the closest to my room temperature, and that means it's 21 minutes. You have to develop for 21 minutes instead of three and a half minutes, which you would do at 102 degrees. So that is the trade-off. Doing it at room temperature will take longer. Um, and uh, are you willing to do that? Because you have to come back and agitate like every two minutes for 21 minutes. Um, I chose not to do that. I'm gonna show you how I did it later. The, and the final thing that comes with the kit is a stabilizer mix. It's something that you uh, dip your film in after you're done with the blicks and after you're done rinsing the blicks, the stabilizer will, they say it, it prevents microbes from forming on the film. And some people don't even use it, but uh, it's just something I had to point out. That's the final chemical that comes in there. They don't say you should rinse off the stabilizer, but I notice when I don't rinse off the stabilizer, I get kind of these water spots. So um, after I leave it in the stabilizer, I always rinse it off and then let it air dry. So those are just, it's kind of boring, but it's, it's technical what I had to explain to you <laughs> how to use this kit and what comes in it. So uh, let's, let's move on to the next step. Hey, before I go any further, I have to point out, although this is a review of how to use this thinner steel kit, um, it's not a complete how to develop color film tutorial. 
I did a video a few months ago, how to develop black and white film from start to finish, how to take the film out the canister, put it on the reel in the dark bag, and all the intricacies. So if you don't know anything about developing film, I suggest you watch that video. I'm going to put a link up here somewhere. Um, so this particular review is for someone who already knows how to develop color film, but this is going to tell you how to go about adjusting for the times and the temperatures. So uh, just had to point that out first. All right, so this next set of photos was shot at the beach. But keep in mind, this was an overcast day. The sun was not out, so that has an effect on the way the colors turn out. But uh, I want to show you something. Look at this car. I think it's an Oldsmobile Cutlass. Look at the way the color pops. <laughs> I just love it. it it's kind of perfect. And again, I didn't have to do any color correction to this. Um, I have to point out, though, the way this color pops, I'm sure it has more to do with the film than the developer but it's it's again it's the whole point of showing how we can develop at room temperature and still get outstanding results so uh, check out some more of these photos Okay, so there's something very important I want to get across with this is that when you develop film, they, they give you like a, a guide to follow. But there's, there's things I found that you can deviate or you can adapt that guide and still get great results. This is a perfect example. This kit says that at 80 degrees for 21 minutes, you want to agitate it every two minutes. You rotate the canister four times and tap it and put it down and come back two minutes more. I didn't want to come back every two minutes for 21 minutes. So what I did, I came up with a, a way to constantly agitate this without me having to be there. I put my canister, I'm going to show you a B-roll right now. I put my canister on a foot massager in such a way that it's slowly agitating it, slowly spinning it. I didn't agitate it exactly as the instruction said, but yet the co these colors I've, I've gotten, the results I've gotten with this film are better than any other color film I've developed in the past three years. So it really goes to show you kind of you can use some common sense. I'm not telling you to ignore the instructions. I'm just showing you the results I got uh, when I kind of did it my way. Uh, so it's just very important to see that um, film developing black and white or color film is not as tricky as we think. Hey, check this out. There's something important to know about this quart kit. When I mix, I mixed the whole thing. And then when I started developing my first roll of film, I realized, wow, I made, this is way too much for just developing one 35 millimeter roll. So if you're only developing a 35 millimeter roll, I suggest using all the liquids and all the measurements in half and leaving the rest for next time because uh, your chemicals should last a few months. Um, when they do expire, when they stop developing, when the strength leaves, you can open the kit and make another half a batch and do more 35 millimeter film. It'll last twice as long. That's something that didn't occur to me when I was mixing it. But that's one thing about color film. It does uh, gradually lose its strength. So by being able to cut it in half like that, you'll get twice the, the use of it. Uh, if you're doing medium format, it's not enough chemical to cut it in half and do twice, but for 35, it's, it's pretty perfect. So I just, just wanted to point that out. All right, so that's my review of the Cinesteel CS41 kit. Hopefully you can see there's nothing to it but to do it. It's not difficult. And I have to say, I'm not trying to put labs out of business because developing and scanning and editing your own film is, takes a long time. It's, a, it's hard on your brain, and it's nice to be able to just send it to a lab and have them do it. Kind of like someone washing your own car, you know? But it's also empowering to be able to do it yourself because you can see it develop and uh, you can tweak it yourself and learn from a hands-on. And that's what analog is really all about. Yeah, so hopefully you benefited from this. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them below. Um, of course, I'm always going to put, uh, put the price up here, as always. And I'll see if I can find a link below where you can get these. So, yeah, but thanks for watching. And keep in mind, no matter what you do, 
to produce or develop your analog uh, art. Until next time, as always, keep it real. Mm -hmm.